2.3 writing linear equations. Today you're just given a table. Yesterday we had a graph, today just the table. So basically these are a lot of I can statements for the whole unit, but the one today is I can write an equation, a linear equation, given a table. The table shows proportional relationships. So what does that mean? I know if this shows proportional relationships, what do I know? What, what is zero then? Zero and? Zero. I know it's going to be zero and zero if they're showing proportional relationships because it's going to go through the origin. I want to know how much it is dollars per hour. What is my rate of change here? What do I do to go from two to three? I plus one. What do I do to go from 16 to 24? I plus eight. These are my x's. These are my y's. So is it 8 over 1 or 1 over 8? 8 over 1. Because it's y over x, so it's 8 over 1. So 8 over 1 simplified equals 8. So what do we have? We have $8 per 1 hour. Let's fill in the in the missing graph now. So if I have five hours, how much is it going to be? How am I going to be paid? I'm getting eight dollars per one hour. What am I getting for five? Five times eight equals forty. Well, what times eight equals sixty-four? You can do that backwards. Sixty-four divided by eight is what? So we're missing eight. So for eight hours of work, you get sixty-four dollars. What about if we wanted to put the four in here? What would four be? How much money? Four dollar four hours would be thirty-two dollars. So it only makes sense that if we work zero hours, we're going to get zero dollars. So it shows proportional relationships. Alright, let's try B. get from 10 to 20? I add 10. What do I do here? 2 to 4? I add 2. So is it 2 over 10 or 10 over 2? 2 over 10. Okay, so I have 2 over 10, which simplifies to 1 over 5. So what does that tell me? I go 1 fifth mile per minute. I go one-fifth mile per minute. What's the same as multiplying if I go one-fifth mile per one minute? Now I want to use that to fill this in. So in ten minutes I go, or ten minutes I go two miles. 20, I go 4. So does this make sense when I go 30? Does 30 go to 7? No, so it's not 30. What's missing there? 35. One fifth. So if we did this backwards, it's 7 divided by one fifth, right? What's 7 divided by one fifth? Can you divide fractions? Who remembers? You can't divide flat fractions. You have to flip and multiply. So 7 times what? 5 over 1, five over one equals 35 over 1, which equals 35. Does that make sense? 35 minutes equals 7 miles. True. Now here, 55 times 1 fifth. That's the same as dividing by 5. What is 55 divided by 5? 11. Those are our missing pieces. What is this known as? This is our what? What did we figure out there? That 1 fifth is our, our rate of change. 
So our equation would be y equals one fifth x. What's my y intercept? Remember these both of these graphs had proportional relationships. So what is our y intercept? The y intercept is going to be at the direct variation. Where does the line go through? The origin, so do I write plus zero here? No. So that would be the equation for that one. It doesn't tell us to, but I want you to also write your equation for this one. Y equals what? Now this one has direct variation. I know that by looking at this. Zero months. When I started at zero months, there was zero money in my account. Find my slope. What's my slope? Zero to two. What did I do? I plus two. What did I do here? I plus 94. This is my x and my y. So $94. Oh, yep, account dollars over two months. Simplified, what is my rate of change? 47 over 1. So every month, my rate of change was a plus or a minus $47? Plus. So every month, I got to add $47 per one month, my unit rate. So with that knowledge, what was 47? What did we just figure out? That's my what? My rate of change, also known as my, my, what is this? Rate of change is also known as my positive or negative, positive or negative, or the, nope, what is this? What's always with our x, known as the m, also? Starts with this. Slope. Slope. So we figured out our slope. $47 times the month. What was our y-intercept? Does this one have direct variation? What follows the zero? But we don't put plus zero, so we just write this for our equation. So y equals 47x. We need to figure out the missing boxes here. So what do I do here? I put 7 in for my x. What's 47 times 7? $329. $329. What month did I have $517? Nine? Eleven. Eleven? How do I figure it out? What do you do on your calculators? Divide. Take 517 and do what? Divide. Divide it by 47 and I get 11. Okay. Each table represents a linear relation. So they're not saying that all of these have direct variation. They don't have a proportional relation. We need to figure it out by looking at it. This letter A, it doesn't get much easier than example A because Y equals, do I know where it crosses the Y intercept right away just by looking at that table? Yes. Where is it? Negative three. They tell us right there, zero, negative three. So that tells me my y-intercept is a negative three. I'm going to put it there right away. That part's done. That is my b, my y-intercept, negative three. This is my b, also known as my y-intercept. Got it? All right, now we need to find our slope. What goes with x? What is my slope? Plus two. All right, so what did we do to get from here to here? Plus two. We plus two. What did I do to get from here to here? Plus one. I plus one. So is it two over one or one over two? One over two. Ooh, discrepancy. One over two. One over two. One over two. Y over X, one over two. Positive or negative? It is positive, so my slope is one half, so y equals one half x minus three. Now on this next one, I don't have my zero. 
I don't have my zero here. So let's extend our table, negative one and zero. We're just going to have to find these two, negative one and zero. Well, let's find, let's find our slope then right away if we don't know. And by the way, what is, how do you say this? F parenthesis X parenthesis equals. Who remembers how to say that? Y equals. That all, good, that also means Y equals. But how, do you remember how to say that? F of X. F of X, good. The function, F of X. So Y equals is the same as F of X here. What are we doing here? What did we have to do to get from here to here? We plus one each time going down. What am I doing from here to here? I'm plusing one again. So that's easy. One over one equals one. So we know our slope is one. Right here. My slope is one. So y equals one x. Do I have to have the one there? No. no, but we can put it there. Now let's figure out what are we missing here? We know we plus six, one. Six, Negative six, one. Five plus one is? Six. Six plus one is? Seven. So what's my y-intercept now? Seven. Nicely done. Zero and seven, my y-intercept is seven. So what do I write here? Plus seven. Plus seven. Excellent. Y equals one x plus seven, or y equals x plus seven. Okay, x and f of x, which is also known as y. Do I have my y-intercept right away? Is this an easy one? Yes. Don't let them trick you. No. Oh. No. What do we know? This zero, we know this is where it crosses the x-axis, not the y. So we need to figure this out. Two, one, zero. We need the one that follows the zero. What is the y? So what do we do? What am I doing to get from here to here? I'm adding two. So what's zero plus two? What's two plus two? Now do I know my y-intercept? What is it? A positive four. So I'm gonna go down here, plus four. But I need to know, well I've got my y, so it's two over what? What's my x? What's the rate of change over here? What do I do? Add one or minus one? I minus one. So what's two over a negative one simplified? A negative two. A negative two what? X. X. So f of x equals a negative two x plus four. Looks like I need to extend. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to hold up your equation that you come up with this one on your board. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. What does y equal? Figure these missing ones out, figure out your slope, your y-intercept, and hold up your equation. Those of you that got this one right, what did you get? Y equals? A negative one. A negative one. Because what was our pattern here? What did we do? Zero. We plus zero, didn't we? Because it kept staying the same. Negative one, negative one, we just plus zero. So what ended up happening? We get zero and negative one. Zero and negative one. So negative one is our what? Negative one is our y-intercept. What is our slope? What goes with x? Well, here we plus zero. What did we do here? We plus one. So what is zero over one? Zero. Zero divided by one is zero, but we don't write zero x. We don't write ox, all right? We don't write that in there. So our final equation should be just y equals a negative one. Y equals a negative one. Do I know my y-intercept here? Don't let them trick you. Do I know my y-intercept right away? No. no, I know my x-intercept. I need to figure out the zero. Give you about a minute to write your equation. And graph it. All right, here's what it looks like when you graph it. What kind of a graph is this? 
It is a, so when we talk about describe the graph using at least four vocabulary words, you could use negative. What's some other vocabulary words that you could use? Linear, direct variation, or proportional relationship. What else? What are some other vocab words that describe that? Decrease. Decrease. What's a decrease? The rate of change or the, what is that also known as? The rate of change or the slope. The slope. All words we could be using to describe this. Telling me about the different things that you see. Or we're missing two. What would this be? What is this? Oh, y intercept. Yep, you can talk about the y intercept. Very good. So let's go back up to our equation now. What did we have to do to get from here to here? From here to here, we did what? Added, added three. What we do from here to here? Subtracted one. So now we have y over x, so we have three over a negative one. What is my slope? A negative three, a negative three x. Does that match our graph? Is that a negative? That is, perfect. What's my y-intercept then? What's six plus three? Nine. Nine. One minus one might get to my zero, so my y-intercept is plus nine. Did it go through the nine on my graph? Good, so we know we did that correctly. One more, and then we can start our homework. Negative one and zero, we need to find out what this is right here for our y-intercept. y equals, what do I do here? What's my pattern? What am I doing on this side? I am, I'm subtracting one on this side. What am I doing over here? I am adding one. So now I have a negative one over one, which equals, ooh, excellent, I see, yes, all those are correct out there. Nice job, guys. So what's a negative one over one? Simplify two as a negative one. So a negative x, or if you want to write it, negative one x, that's okay also. Now we need to figure out the y-intercept. If we're minusing one, what's a negative six minus one? Negative seven. So that's my y-intercept. And then you graph it. So I know that my y-intercept is going to be down here at negative five, six, seven. My slope is what? Negative one. So I'll write one down one. Your graph is hopefully going in this direction. Oops, there we go. Your homework. Pages seven, eight, and nine in your packet. It should be the last three pages in this packet. We have a quiz tomorrow.